Carol Schulte, I never thought I'd be here. What are you afraid of? When I was in theater school, they had us do this exercise where they'd asked us to trigger our deepest fear in order to evoke emotion and tears. The idea being that we would learn how to cry at the drop of a hat. And mine was always the same. Ever since I was little, my deepest fear was losing my mom. You see, my mom was my person. She saw me. She got me. And then she got sick. Like, really sick. Like, losing your hair from chemo, sick. Like, skeleton, sick. And my deepest fear became my reality. I lost my mom. And then I lost me. So I went on a mad search to find me again. I checked in Chiang Mai, volunteering at an orphanage for HIV babies and children. I combed through Calcutta, ended up at Mother Teresa's home for the dying. I rummaged through Rishikesh, lived in an ashram, practiced intense yoga and meditation. I shaved my head, raised money for breast cancer research. I spent three months apple picking in New Zealand. I may have met a man and moved into his van. <laughs> may have had something to do with it. But was I being brave? <laughs> no. I was running. I was hiding. I was escaping. I wasn't conquering anything at all. See, as soon as we're choosing and trying to actually conquer our fears, it's actually our fears that are conquering us. You know, our fears are like that whack-a-mole game that I used to play at Chuck E. Cheese when I was younger. As soon as you knock one down, another one pops right on up. And that's what happened to me. My fear of losing my mom became my fear of not becoming a mom myself and being able to be the person for my child one day the way that my mom was for me. And then I discovered something fascinating about fear. When you flip it over, if you look carefully enough, what you find is desire. And the deeper the fear, the greater the desire. Which leads me to my next question. Have you ever given yourself a subcutaneous injection? <laughs> so what, happen what happens is you pinch the skin, it's still a little tender, and you take your syringe and you stick it in underneath all the way and slowly squeeze that syringe until there's no liquid left. I did this for the first time on November 9th. It was not fun. And over the last 11 days, I've done that 24 more times, injecting five different types of drugs into my abdomen and my thighs, popped a whole bunch of pills, and rubbed hormonal gel on my shoulders every night before bed for one reason only. I want babies, and I don't have any, and I am single, and I am 38 years old, which means it's egg freezing time, which starts with egg harvesting, which happens when they say go time, which was actually this morning. So at 10.30, I was in a hospital gown being put under twilight anesthetic and rolled into the egg retrieval surgery room. Now, I don't actually know exactly what went down in there. All I know is that it was the longest needle I have ever seen, and it involved a whole lot of pain and discomfort and then squeezing out all the liquid from my follicles, hoping to find some treasure inside. And now, after five months of no coffee, no alcohol, no highlighting of my hair, no doing of my nails, I'm happy to report that I have nine tiny little eggs that hopefully come tomorrow will be comfortably chilling in a freezer down the street. <laughs> I never thought I'd be here. But I could have spent all of that time and energy trying to conquer my fear. But it would have been futile. Because our fears aren't going in anywhere. 
And so instead of being afraid of your fear or ashamed of your fear, why not be brave enough to feel it, to face it, to embrace it, and then expose it? Because then what you'll find is actually your fears and your desires are two sides of the same coin. And it is far more powerful to be pulled by your desires than to be paralyzed for your fears. So I could have sat in that sterile waiting room, not making eye contact with anybody else for fear of being discovered, exposed. Or I could take selfies with the nurses. And I have to say, I have a few cute ones. And I could shamelessly ask you to invite any eligible, kind, cute bachelors my way. And I can bravely stand here totally crampy, totally bloated, and totally exposed. And I am. Because when I look at my deepest fears, now all I see are my greatest desires. And so can you. So, what are you afraid of? Thank you.